how to create a publisher and a solution in Dynamics 365. Let's have a look. Now, before you start any development in Dynamics 365, you need to create a solution and also a publisher. Now, there are two ways that you can do that. First is the classic method where you click on the cog over here and click on advanced settings and under settings, you can click on solutions. And in this particular page, you can click on new and start creating your solution. Well, this has been the classical way of creating a solution, right? But now, of course, there's a new power platform uh, environment where you can also view your solutions and also create your solutions so for that if you open a new tab and type in make.powerapps.com and sign in with your credentials then you will land up on this particular page which is the power apps page now there are various things that you can do over here but you can also create the solution now this area is the same as the classical solutions over here okay and what i would suggest is to get more used to this new environment because this is the way forward okay so the first thing that you need to do is check the environment that you're in so you might be having many tenants so choose the right tenant so for us it is the contoso tenant and then you will be able to work in that particular environment okay now if you click on solutions it will list down all the solutions that are available over here now since this is a demo environment so you can see uh, many uh, solutions over here but it is the same uh, list of solutions that you see in your classic view Okay, and from here, if you want to switch back to your classic view, you can actually click on switch to classic. And again, it will take you to the Dynamics 365 solutions page. So to be able to create a new solution, click on new solution over here. Now you can consider solution as a work area, which you can package and then deploy to other environments as well. Okay, so let me just name the solution as tech quantum. This is the display name and this is the schema name. Okay, so if you want, you can also change the schema name as well. The schema name is the name how the system recognizes the record. For each solution, you need a publisher. Now, publisher is the company profile. So for example, uh, if you are a customer and your partner is doing some development in your system, then they will define the publisher or the company profile. By that, you will come to know, okay, this particular solution has been deployed by this company. Okay, so let's create a new publisher over here. Let's say the display name as um, Tech Quantum and the name, let's put it Tech Quantum as it is. You can also put some description over here, which is a good one. Now, each customization that you do, okay? If, for example, if in an entity you are creating a new field or you are creating a new entity itself, by default, the pre prefix is new underscore. But uh, this is a default prefix. I would recommend you to use your own prefix so that, you know, you can come to know that uh, this change has been done by us or by the company, whichever is doing the change, okay? So uh, let me just say it as TQ. Now by this, I will know that all my changes will be prefixed with TQ, right? So this is a preview. So if I create a new entity, it will be marked as TQ underscore the entity name that I have. Now, when you create an option or an option set value, so for example, there are different values in an option set, then behind the scenes, the system applies an integer value to it, you know, so that it is easily recognized by the system. So that number or the number series, uh, how it starts is defined over here. So for example, if you create a new option set and you define the values, the first value will be, will start from 26, uh, 107, and then it will continue, you know, 108, 109. So um, if you're okay with this, you can do that. What I would do right now over here, I will rather start with 26,000 so that it's easily recognizable like one, two, three, or maybe I can do as 26,001. All right, uh, you can also optionally provide, you know, the phone number, the website, the street and everything because the publisher is a company profile. So it's recommended to provide all the details over here. And once you're done, you can save and close. Okay, so so now when you click on the publisher, you will see that the Tech Quantum publisher is available. Now you might not see it right away because what it does right now is that when you create a publisher, it goes to classic view and creates over there and comes back over here, right? So you might need to refresh this uh, page. Select your publisher. If you want, you can edit it again. And then you provide the version, which is also important when you are doing continuous development over here. So in the description, you can provide some logical description, let's say what the solution is all about. So just give a one liner so that it's easily recognizable that what has been done in this particular solution. Because over the period, you can create many solutions as well, right? 
and then you can just click on create so as you can see the solution has been created over here now let's see if this actually has also created that in a classic version so if i go to classic version and just refresh this page and then sort it by t you can see that i have the tech quantum solution that i just created from there and of course if you want to create a solution from the classic version all you need to do is click on new and follow the same steps that we defined over there most of us are used to it i would rather recommend that you get used to the new environment as well so let's just have a look at the solution that we just created so if i open this tech quantum so as you can see it's a blank solution there is nothing to it so as we move forward we can create uh, either new apps dashboard entity flow report whatever that is we can keep on adding or if we have to add an existing entity we or flow or ui or app or dashboard we can click on add as existing and then search for it right so let's say i want to add um, existing entity let's say accounts and contact so i will select account over here and maybe if i just scroll down i can check for contact and then click on next and then i have the up option to include all components or include the metadata i would recommend that you always use include the entity metadata but when you try to include all components you just be careful now for this example i will uh, include all components but i would actually recommend that you only include those components which you require to change otherwise what happens is it just creates a complexity and you know when you're doing multiple deployments it gets confusing that what were the elements that you changed so it's better to include only those components which you require but in this example i'm just including all and then click on add so you can see that these are all the fields that have been included uh, there are one to end end to one and end to end relationships that have been added all the business rules uh, if there were any uh, all the views that there are um, added all the forms uh, are added dashboards charts keys and data have been added as well um, and as i said uh, when you start working on something it's better that you only add those things on or those fields or elements that you require to work on rather than adding all the fields and you know all the elements uh, as shown over here now in this particular environment it's um, almost the same as the classic but you know the look and feel is a little different why let me just show you that same solution in the classical environment so if i open this um, tech quantum in my classic environment then you will see that this is something that uh, if you have already worked with crm you are already aware of this kind of look right so over here also it shows that you know we have this tech quantum solution and these are the entities that we just added and if we drop down on the entities you can see that these are the forms uh, that have been added these are the views that have been added and so on and so forth right so the purpose of this video was to show you that you know before you start any development first thing is the solution and the publisher that you need to create and to be able to create that you can use either the classic environment or the new power apps uh, studio right so why don't you go ahead and try it for yourself and stay tuned for our next video Thank mm -hmm. you.